Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Now I have to bring in my amiable co-anchor, Mr. Steve Ayori. Thank, Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you, Shaitan. Good morning. Good morning. All right, wow, how time flies. And we'll make it straight to introduce our esteemed guest, Adiza Balausman, President Bola Tinubu's Special Advisor on Policy Coordination and a former Managing Director of Nigerian Ports Authority. Good morning. Good morning. to see you. Thank you Good for morning. having me. Good morning. Thank you for <laughs> being for here. Me. All right. And congratulations, <laughs> Special Advisor so on, yeah, on Policy Coordination. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. We'll, we'll get to talk um, a lot about what that entails. I know that uh, you're swearing in, right? It's still yes. coming up like yes. in, in a matter of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looks to me like that has put a stop to your book tour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. On your book, yes. Stepping on Toes, My Odyssey at the Nigerian Ports Authority, 196 pages. Mm. Whose toes did you step on? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all detailed there and um, it's evident from um, the way I was suspended and my eventual exit. Um, there is a lot of, I will say, um, orchestration around um, how it was done, what it meant. And um, I think that's why I felt it was important to... Um, put it down in a book and also to um, title it Stepping on Toes because indeed there are a lot of big toes that felt they couldn't mm. be stepped on in the maritime sector mm. and some of the things I did um, was perceived by them to be encroaching in on what they felt has been naturally theirs challenging um, some of their wrongful contractual obligations that they had mm. and also conniving with the larger space to see how we can edge this um, person out of the, the Ports Authority. Mm. Mm. I've read a book a, a bit about the book and I know that yes you mentioned uh, stuff about Intel and of course when we say Intel we're talking about article I know that you mentioned stuff about uh, uh, BUA yes but a lot of people would think that this is about the issues that you had with the former Minister of Transportation mm. Mm. Uh, Rutimi Amechi yeah. is this essential about him um, absolutely not um, if you read the book you'll see it talks about um, the whole my journey into Nigerian ports and what I did there, yeah. highlighting um, some of the clear reforms that were were done, mm -hmm. and I also speak about my lessons learned in public service and on how to guide people um, coming to the service. So really, it's not about one individual, but about the journey. And if indeed you feature in the journey, you'd be mentioned. So mm -hmm. definitely, there are a lot of actors that have been mentioned, um, which would include himself. Um, but it's really um, more about sharing my story and also um, encouraging other people to share their stories. Mm -hmm. Because um, some of the challenges that are obtainable in, in a public service are things that people should be aware of and are things that people should know. And in my own case, there's also the issue of um, um, maligning of character, which um, spoke to um, how I was suspended, um, the, the process with which I was suspended, the panel that was constituted, um, the main trust of the allegation around um, non-remittance of 165 billion yeah. that was mm. determined not to have been remitted, and um, a number of um, clear allegations that were made around financial misappropriation that was not... Um, they were not able to validate them after eight months of, of, of an investigation. So I felt it was important for me to set the record straight for Nigerians to know um, what happened, how it happened, and the outcome of this um, um, investigation. Um, the fact that the Federal Ministry of Transportation never um, submitted the report of the panel, um, but so kindly, Mr. President, then the former president, directed that all the infractions that were determined from the panel should be sent to me, and that is contained in this re, um, book, mm -hmm. which details exactly um, what infractions they, they, they established. And the, the, as I mentioned, the core to it, which is the non-remittance, mm -hmm. was conspicuously absent in the, in the, in the um, um, uh, <laughs> alleged <laughs> query or infractions that were done. Mm -hmm. um, so it was evident that um, some of these things are clear. And um, you talked about Intels and um, you mentioned a few companies. Um, I felt it was imperative to detail what relationship um, while I was Nigerian Ports Authority um, obtained with um, this company and other topical companies. Um, one of the, I'll say, main drivers of the agitation by the former minister was around an extension of expired contracts. Yeah. So it's quite interesting where... That, that took a whole chapter, Yes, right? it did. 
<laughs> so some of those things are clear when you have a contractor that has been providing a service to a government agency from 1997 mm. to 2020 and the contract expires by exclusion of time and the minister just says oh just extend it and we I, I couldn't comprehend why you you think it's appropriate not to subject this um, project to a public tender process if this company is so qualified why is it afraid of um, participating in a public tender process why are you so gung-ho on extending expired contracts and this is the one there's another one also which is stipulated in the book where you have a contractor for 12 years and the contract expired and you just say extend it not subjecting it to a public tender process mm -hmm. which is a violation of our procurement process mm -hmm. so when um, such directives are given to you and you do not do them and it's construed to be um, was it disrespectful or <laughs> construed to be um, in subordination so am I subordinate to you or am I subordinate to legislative provisions that govern Guide governance. So, in subordination to a person or in subordination to, to, to the Nigerian people, to the Nigerian economy, to what it is that is in Nigeria's best interest. Mm. Thank you so much for setting the tone you know, of this conversation. And from what I'm getting, it's not just about stepping on toes, it's about clearing the air about what happened exactly. And uh, at your reading, uh, your book reading, you did say that you, uh, you faulted government officials for not being transparent with their activities in office. And added, you also added that, you know, uh, secrecy in government, of course, enables people to get away with certain uh, things. So I want to kind of turn the, uh, the attention of this uh, interview to transparency yeah. and accountability in vital, uh, 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 playing a vital role in policy coordination mm -hmm. and governance. Now, this is a very, very, very <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I was just reading a, f a few things on it as you we were talking. Mm. I want to know how you're going to bring that mm. into mm. your, you know, your new role, mm. especially when it comes into comes to policy implementation. You know, mm. there's already a trust deficit mm. between the Nigerian government and mm. the Nigerian people. Mm. So, how are you going to help reduce that gap? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a believer of um, demystification of governance, uh, meaning shedding light and transparency and accountability. And I think this is one of the things that. I I mentioned about in the book where um, a lot of people disagree with sort of shedding light they like the opacity of government where people are not um, do not have full knowledge of what is going on so I'm a strong believer in that which is why um, while I was Nigerian Post Authority I was keen to shed light and clarity on whatever it is that is going on and when you take that into my new role um, this is more about coordination of policies ensuring that there's synergy ensuring that um, there's clarity on what the government intends to do and the linkages with all the other um, areas so one policy is not a standalone policy it has the attendant linkages with other sectoral policies and those have to be addressed and have to be linked to maximize the benefit and to ensure one is not sub, um, subjugated to the other or one is not um, overriding the other. So that's really um, one of the things that um, the policy coordination role would have. And yes, um, my experience would definitely um, play a huge role because um, sitting in the role that I had um, in the Nigerian Post Authority for five years, mm -hmm. and also while I was in Kaduna as Chief of Staff, which is a subnational um, assignment, um, it has given me a very, I'll say, um, uh, I've been able to have a bird's eye view on how um, lack of coordination of policies hinders growth and hinders development. Um, so I had seen errors and different examples of that, which is why um, we felt in this administration there's a need to um, have that synergy which would um, give us the leap and bounds we need to achieve when delivering on our mandate. Mm. All right, I, mean, I, I will come back to that so that you can expand you know, your thoughts on, yes. uh, on how all this will work. But then uh, uh, going back to your book yes. and the things that you detail, a lot of people will um, submit that you were somehow close to uh, President Muhammad Buhari yes. uh, and, and that the, the way that it turned out that you were treated mm. uh, was a bit surprising. Mm. Um, there were a few governors that you were also close to mm. and who I believe did intervene <laughs> yes. on your behalf. What, what, do you, what, what was really the problem um, with the former minister? I wouldn't know. I think um, he says he's writing a book so he may mention what he felt was a problem. Um, I've detailed my own understanding of what he had told me. Um, it's there in the, as, as to the reason why he wanted me to leave and his, the actions that he took. He said that to me directly and um, I've, I've, I've specified it. And yes... Um, it, it wasn't about the, the birthday gift? 
uh, I think he would um, have. He, he he says he would expatiate on on the birthday gift and every other thing in his book. So we all look forward to seeing what he's going to say. Um, the but, designer bag yes, and all those. Exactly. <laughs> so for me, I have said um, my own bits. I've explained um, what transpired. I've detailed it. And um, everyone else is free to give their own perspective and opinions of what happened. And yes, I'm quite close to um, um, a, num not, uh, a lot of the APC governors because I've been part of the political space in Nigeria for quite a while in setting up APC and in and a lot of our electoral and political processes. So yes, the governors did intervene. And um, I've also mentioned his response to the governors <laughs> when they intervened with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, President Buhari is someone um, that always want to, doesn't want to be seen to be favoring anyone or doesn't want to be seen to be um, standing in the way of what he believes is a procedure mm -hmm. as it relates to an issue of uh, misappropriation of funds, which is why the minister, having tried on two occasions to the president to have me removed and the president declined his request, he now decided to um, submit an issue of an allegation of financial misappropriation. And that um, is something that the president, um, knowing his character, would definitely say, oh, you know, I can't intervene. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how close I am to Hadiza. If she's said to have done something, she should go through the process of being investigated. Mm -hmm. So this is something that the president will do. And then, yes, fast forward the outcome of the um, panel, the, the infractions panel that were yeah. listed. Yeah. Um, they sent to me for me to respond. I detailed my response on all the errors, which, as I mentioned, is in the book. They, uh, so I'm curious as to what they gave the president. <laughs> so could it be my response was what was given to him? Uh, could it be definitely a review of my response which showed that everything I responded to has no um, validity, all my claims or my explanations were not justifiable. So I'll be curious to see um, um, what was communicated back to the president with my response yeah. on which basis the president um, appointed another um, CEO. There's also um, in the announcement of the new CEO's position, they mentioned that he was appointed due to an increase in revenue without reference to the fact that the previous person was actually suspended for infraction. So you were appointed not because the infractions were validated, but because you increased revenue in the eight months. So it was quite an interesting mix. Mm -hmm. And I always find it laughable that you allege financial misappropriation and then you have the executive director of finance being now acting. So if there is any financial misappropriation, it will be very, as some of you that are familiar with um, governance or really financial management, mm. very difficult that the executive director of finance and admin will not be knowledgeable or not oh, yeah. be in the mix <laughs> of whatever appropriation was alleged to have been done. Mm. But um, I think it was his way of um, sort of instituting or putting his own cronies into um, the position of um, chief executive of Nigerian Ports. And um, it is what it is. I mean, policy coordination requires collaboration across government ministries, departments, and agencies. And now that you're stepping into that role, do yeah. you are you a bit concerned that maybe it might hinder, mm. you know, foster interagency collaboration and mm. maybe promoting this culture of mm. uh, cooperation to enhance policy effectiveness and addressing mm. complex issues as we need to? Mm. Do you think that maybe no, absolutely that's yeah. caught it? Um, so. When you say you're coordinating policies, the policies actually sit with the um, MDAs. So the department and agencies of government are the are where policies are implemented. And when you're trying to do a coordination, which would mean ensuring that um, agencies of government all work together with the understanding that there's a one policy trust we're trying to achieve and all of us must speak in that language and we must harmonize our positions to um, maximize service delivery. Yeah. And we don't want a case where one policy is actually counter the other policy and at the end of the day, with those two policies being at loggerheads, um, nothing uh, is achieved. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, so how, how will you navigate um, uh, your new role in the public sector, given uh, what you went through mm. at the MPA. Mm. I know that you're coming with um, uh, enormous experience uh, yes. from uh, BP mm -hmm. to the FCT, mm -hmm. of course, to Chief of Staff in Kaduna State and then uh, MPA. But a lot of people will say that part of the problem that we have uh, one would be about policy implementation and coordination. Mm -hmm. But then people will say that policies and laws are always there. Mm. It is the implementation. The implementation. Yeah. How will your office, what, what role will you be specifically mm. playing mm. given the fact that this is an APC government mm. taking over from an APC government, mm. but we can 
see from the body language and even from what the new president is saying mm. that certain things were not done rightly. Mm. I mean, uh, the president said in Paris mm. uh, just, uh, I think, yesterday or two mm. days ago mm. about how the CBN governor mm. uh, and his policies messed up the financial mm. uh, space mm. for Nigeria. Uh, you will be advising the president. Mm. How will you navigate it so that, yeah. you know, we can have better coordination yeah. as far as policies are concerned. Yeah. I, I think like governance is a continuum, irrespective of whether it's the same political party. So um, government and governance is a continuum. Is As you go along, you would um, adjust your own um, method of implementing um, certain policies, policies and also even adjust the policies in line um, with what your own vision is in actualizing those reforms. So yes, there would be... Um, a need to to look at what was done and to enhance it so it's as i said it's a continuum is a work in progress and there will definitely be areas where there will be adjustment and uh, reviews there will definitely be other areas where we we'll just proceed with this with it as as, as it was met but indeed um, what is required for coordination is to ensure that um, all ministries and departments agencies of government on a pol particular policy positions are all in sync mm -hmm. so there's no um there's no contrary position. Because a lot of times you see um, conflicting policies. So agencies have conflicting policies on a particular area. Mm. Some of the examples I remember, um, this is a while, while I was in Kaduna, we were trying to increase and um, promote um, dairy farming. Yeah. And at that time, there was a policy that was promoted with the reduction in um, import duties on dairy products. Mm. So that automatically affected those um, investment in dairy farming. So these are some of the things. This was way in 2016. Um, I don't know what the current state is, but I remember while I was in chief, chief of staff in Kaduna, we faced um, that challenge and we couldn't comprehend how um, the government was trying to promote dairy farming across the northern region. And at the same time, it reduced the import duty tariff on dairy products. So automatically, the country will be flooded with um, cheap dairy products that will not allow for um, the dairy farmers to sort of break even on their investment. So this is just a little example of um, some of the issues that could um, obtain. As I said, this dairy example was in 2016. I really don't know what's obtainable now. Mm -hmm. Probably it's been um, adjusted. So there are many such um, policies that are thrown into the mix without understanding the attendant effects it, it, um, it has in delivering on some other um, um, clear areas of, of initiatives that have been pushed by, by a government. Mm. You've spoken about being in sync and it just wants, I, I want to highlight, you know, the proposed uh, merger of the Nigerian uh, customs uh, service the, uh, uh, of uh, Nimasa and of course FIRS. Now it's, there's a lot of controversy that has thrilled <laughs> that announcement because I mean, the, we have uh, the faction that is all for it and we have people that believe that it should not even be discussed at all. Yeah. So I want to know what your thoughts are on, mm -hmm. it, are on it and if it's something that is, you know, this proposal goes forward, what policy measures mm -hmm. do you intend to put in place to spearhead mm -hmm. or to facilitate this mm. uh, measure mm. to ensure a seamless integration mm. of these agencies while maintaining their core mandates, mm. of course. Mm. Um, the Policy Advisory Council did a review and determined that that is a recommendation and to what extent that recommendation will be implemented is left to be seen. But of course, there will be additional sort of to look at mm. um, the modalities of implementation. And um, this document, was it formally presented? Um, or was it a document that was just um, leaked out? You know, mm. did this administration formally present this as the um, sort of um, a, 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 a reform that it intends to embark on? So mm. we need to also be mindful about taking a very leaked document, a document that wasn't formally presented, and owning it and um, asking us, us, us to, to comment on it. But yes, the advisory council um, has that as a document. Um, will it be a document that would be implemented in its totality? That's um, something that is work in progress and will be determined, I believe, within the next um, few months as to the mode of any such and indeed if that would happen. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, you, talking that. about policies yes. and coordination, you grew up in an academic environment, yeah. in Zari and everything. Your dad, you know, uh, was also an academic, I believe. Um, how will you, given your background, mm. look at uh, a key policy uh, of the Tinubu administration, which is the uh, student loan yes. scheme. Mm -hmm. um, ASU is up in arms against it. Mm -hmm. uh, many people are saying that it is, uh, it, it might look like it is for the poor, mm. but it is actually, they think, anti-poor. Mm. Uh, this is an area that is also of interest to you. Mm. What sort of advice will you be giving 
the president mm. in terms of implementation? Um, I'm, I'm, as you mentioned, I'm from the academic background, so I'm a strong believer in promoting and ensuring that universities function effectively. Um, the, the base of which I am where I am because I was brought up in a university community and university environment, so education is key. Um, the provision of the um, loan, student loan scheme, um, if people look at it as um, the fact that it's not meant for the poor, well, it's meant for someone, and mm. someone would benefit. Mm. Yeah, It may need not to be the poor, it, but it, the Nigerians, there are a whole huge bucket of Nigerians that will benefit from that, and that is what matters. So narrowing it down to whether this is the beneficiary or not, but the trust is a whole um, millions of Nigerian um, students will benefit from that. If you do not fit into the category of the bracket that will benefit, that doesn't mean there aren't other Nigerians that will benefit um, w w with that. And most importantly is to uh, avail um, people the opportunities, people the access to determine the route they want to follow in getting educated. If you look at the student loan scheme to determine that is your route, you pick that route. If you believe your parents have the capacity to pay for you, that is your route. So what is important is ensuring that there are options, and those options are options that are functional options, and they're able to deliver on what it is you need to do. You need to be educated. You're struggling to find how to um, fund it. This is an option for you. And I think um, we need to sort of um, understand the need to open up the space and have various um, opportunities for people to embark on whatever it is um, they intend to do. And um, I, I support the um, student loan scheme and we look forward to seeing um, its implementation mm. because a lot of things when we start up um, legislations, yeah. policy positions, um, when we get implementation, we may see a little areas where we need to adjust here and yeah. there to mm. accommodate the realities on ground when it comes to implementation. These are the things that we would see, but I'm hopeful and I, uh, I believe that it would add value um, to our education. But precisely, system. have you read the, the law do? No, I haven't read it, but I've had presentations on it before um, the president signed it. Um, during the campaign, we had looked at um, um, the documents, we had reviewed it, and it's interesting, I was in the U.S. during the campaign and I bought a book on the challenges of the student loan scheme in the U.S., mm -hmm. and I shared it with, um, with a few of my colleagues that were working on, on the campaign documents just to enable us to see um, the holistic. Uh, yes, yeah. the challenges that they are facing in the U.S. on student loan yeah. to make sure that we don't fall into that pitfall. Mm -hmm. But um, identifying challenges doesn't mean that there are no benefits, so there are attendant benefits, and um, whatever gaps exist as we implement, would adjust them and whatever challenges they've had in areas they've implemented would work to, to, to adjust those. Mm. Another thing that is on top of mind for a lot of Nigerians and you know we're talking about the vulnerable being affected, this one everybody has been affected <laughs> is fuel subsidy and it's <laughs> you know it, everybody's talking about it. Now the removal of, of fuel subsidy of course has, a, has a, had a significant impact on the Nigerian population but particularly the most vulnerable. Yes. Now there's been a lot of back and forth as to how to handle it. Yes. You know, there's a you know a, a, a social scheme that has been set up. Yes. There's been you know a push for you know the 800 million dollar loan that has been uh, that has received from the World Bank, and there have been uh, even calls from the NLC and TUC to increase yeah. their you know their allowance, their minimum wage. What I want to know is how do you intend to leverage your role, of course, mm. as the special advisor on policy, uh, policy coordination to mm. mitigate mm. these adverse effects? Like he would say, <laughs> what <laughs> advice would you give the president? Because this is affecting us directly. How do we move forward from where we are and get to where we need to yeah. be? I'm sure you'd have seen that uh, Mr. President has um, directed the National Economic Council, chaired by the vice president, to formulate the policies that are needed to mitigate the impact of the fuel subsidy. Mm -hmm. um, so the Economic Council, as you know, sits with um, the governors and the, and the vice president, the Nigerian Governors Forum, and that um, committee, the council, is going to brainstorm to determine what would be done, what sort of um, uh, mitigants will be provided for Nigerians. And we look forward to seeing, um, the Nigerians will look forward to seeing. In my role, I will definitely uh, be in there to see that whatever policy positions are being proposed um, by the Economic Council are policy uh, provisions that are in sync with other existing uh, mitigants against um, any um, increase in, in tariffs everywhere. So um, we, I think 
Nigerians should um, await to see what the outcome of that deliberation. And because it's the Economic Council, you'll see you have representation across the whole country. So um, the governor of uh, Yobe is there, the governor of Akwa Ibom is there across the whole country. So mm. everybody would be able to bring to the table mm. what it is that locally affects their people and what sort of mitigants their own people would look at as mm. being favorable based on... Um, our geopolitical space based on the local context of how this would affect um, the people. So uh, Mr. President was very right in um, um, putting National Economic Council as the lead in bringing up these um, policies to mitigate the um, subsidy removal. Okay, so while they are talking, discussing and thinking of what to do mm -hmm. to mitigate the impact, for how long do you think that Nigerians should suffer mm. while they are waiting? <laughs> I, I, I do, I, I do. Well, I'm not sure about it's suffering. Like I don't, I don't consider it's it is, suffering. It is suffering. I consider it the reality of what we are in Nigeria. You don't it's think like, that Nigerians are suffering? Nigerians as a result would of the policy. suffer, but that policy is the reality of what we are. We'll be living in a pipe dream, thinking that it makes sense for us to have fuel at a certain price, which is not um, the the actual cost. Yeah. So we have been subsidizing other countries. We have seen that the so-called volume of um, yeah. um, consumption has tremendously dropped. Well, how is that the fault of the masses? No, the fault of them is not about any. It's not about fault. It's about yeah. understanding the reality. Your country produces this and buys this as so amount. So yeah. you need to know that is the reality. Your government cannot continue subsidizing, claiming to be subsidizing you when it's actually not subsidizing you. So the perception that you are being subsidized is actually even wrong. But they were subsidizing yeah, yeah. the masses. Yeah, no. So that because is if why. Because were buying fuel, so, so, so that is why. To five, so that is why it's different from the government. Five five. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's why the government is providing mitigants. So the issue of where, the subsidy, where are they? the mitigants would come. So it's when? more like, when would Economic Council sit and bring it up? Mm -hmm. But the fact that that um, differential in um, cost of petroleum products yeah. for Nigerians, is the, this is the reality of um, 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 petroleum product for us. So we need to accept it for what it is and look at the mitigants. How, at what point will the mitigants be available to Nigerians? If that is what we should that do. Focus on that, the timing, and see how effective it if is. If it turns but out that, that the majority is. of Nigerians will not be able to cope, mm. because there are uh, 130 million mm -hmm. uh, poor people, mm -hmm. multi-dimensional mm -hmm. poor people mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. Will not be Many able to can just afford it. Well, what, what, what will be no, your no, no. advice so the issue when is not you about go to cabinet? Many cannot afford it. There are many things many people cannot afford. So people cannot afford to have five cars. People cannot afford to have um, three cars. I'm not talking about no, those. No, I'm saying who, that people cannot cars. randomly get one million and buy a golf and just be going on the road. So I'm, I'm not talking no, about. No, no, I'm talking. People. So I'm talking. So that would cascade down to the people you're talking about. A lady selling akara, the price of akara would yeah. go up. Yes. So what I mean is that that cost that the lady that is selling akara yes. has an attendant, so she would also sell her akara at a higher rate. Mm. It sounds so, to me like your message would be that you just have to. Learn to cope. To no, no, no. We, we, the, the mitigants product. will be provided. Mm -hmm. Learn to cope is the reality. We would learn to cope and mitigants will be provided through the National Economic Council. So, but the idea that some people, oh, people are going to suffer so we keep the subsidy, no. Subsidy has to go. But there's already... And then the mitigants need yeah. to be done in a timely manner so that it's brought down effectively. But what is the volume of mitigants that would cover a space of 200 million people? We have to face that reality to realize that how much can that mitigant create a buffer? There would be a buffer to the, the poorest of the poor. We've done in the last eight years, worked on social investment scheme. We have a database of the poorest of the poor, quote unquote, that yeah. was done. How... Um, who are those poorest of the poor, um, the volume? Yeah. Is it a drop in an ocean, considering mm -hmm. the volume of the poor people we have? Yeah. What we're doing, is it a drop in the ocean? How effective is this um, um, conditional cash transfer? Is this what would eventually um, provide the succor needed? Do we keep giving people 55,000 5, Naira? This uh, X number uh, uh, people that have been developed by a database that um, we don't know how it was, it, was, it was brought about. So these are the things that need to be done. But by and large, at the end of the day, is that people would have to cope. Everybody is going to have to adjust, including the people with the 10 convoys. How is the government speak coping? About, I, I, fact, how, yes. how, how, so how the people with 10 convoys are the government convoy, giving the people yes. into all Speaking this? Speaking about adjustments. Because, yeah. because, I mean, so so just, when you ask about what is yes. that, when it is, what is that, what the government is going to, is going to do something, when will it roll it out? That is the question. And it will roll no, it out. No, I'm, I'm also talking that. about... <laughs> For example, so now, this 114% exactly. increase that yeah. came yes. at such a time where yes. a lot of Nigerians As are trying 
as, as, a, a, as a proposal. Yes. You know, they've, you know, even the um, Dela like, to say that no, this is not something that we're aware of. It's, it's you know, people are trying to stir up the polity. But the fact that we're even having that conversation, mm -hmm. the fact that cost of governance is something that we've spoken about mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. You, we've spoken about a lot of things being shrouded in secrecy. Mm -hmm. Till now, a lot of people don't even know mm -hmm. exactly how much a lot of people that are in government, you know, positions and government parasites make. So when you're when you're looking at that, you're comparing it to people that can't even afford to buy the necessary things and then they have to deal with fuel so subsidy. So why are we talking about an increase in salary that has been debunked? The president said he hasn't approved it. So it's a known, it's, a, it's like a non-issue. No, no, but we're talking about debunked. making an yes. adjustment. It, no, no. it was debunked because no. it's a proposal that has been sent to him. Yeah. He hasn't considered it to approve it. Ramfak exactly. has done his job. Yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. as it's yeah. allowed by law. Yes. So it, it so wasn't debunked. Read, it was, was debunked. No, it was mm -hmm. debunked. The, the report was that President Tinubu has approved, mm. and that was debunked. Uh, there were maybe yes, on social yes, yes, media. Yes, yes. No, no, maybe no, no, on no, no. social media. The official, but, but the official the, narrative yeah. was that the president has approved the increase in salary. Official narrative by So, so the response from Ramfak. No, no, yeah. Ramfak never said uh, President Tinubu had approved. Ramfak said nobody we have said made a recommendation. It was a recommendation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody of note ever said Tinubu has approved. So, so why did it elicit a, a response to say it was not? It is why is Dele Alakia saying it was not if it was not reported that it was? So who reported it? Did, did you read that? So you just so I'm saying it that nobody, yeah. nobody reported so that, that in the serious media. So that recommendation yeah. that was done was... If you had read, they said there was no recommendation from 2007. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if they made a recommendation, yeah. so do we go in arms about a recommendation that hasn't been considered? The fact exactly. that it's even coming up at all. No, and people the fact are engaging that with it. So in, the same way, so in the same way, people should be engaging with what NEC is doing. Mm. Yeah. So if Ramfak is bringing up a recommendation for that cluster yeah. of public servants, yeah. NEC is creating another cluster of mitigants sitting with people that are seen to be vulnerable groups. Yeah, but they have so not said anything two, yet. They haven't said anything yet. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's the same thing that it, um, um, they have not said anything. No, so which is why when I mentioned to you, I said we should look about the when mm -hmm. we should get economic council to work on it and bring it up. Which but was, for us to say which that was why we I say should that not, while we're waiting we for not, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. people are suffering. No, people would suffer. That's what I'm saying. That's people the reality. Yes. People suffer in the course of governance. People suffer long, when reforms are implemented. No. For how long? For, for up until when um, we adjust what it is that we need to do, face are our reality. So when we feel that, oh, no policy should mm. be done that would make people suffer. Mm. I mean, that's even laughable to bring it up. What we need to do is to ensure that there are mitigants to prevent that, ensure that we put in place what is needed. And as I keep repeating, it's for us to say, when will those mitigants come? We cannot keep it open-ended. Next, you need to so get on this welfare, assignment mm, and because get welfare it delivered. Is the key is, is, is safety and welfare of the yeah, people yes. are the key reasons why governments are there. Security, so that's, security uh, as well. Yeah. That's, that's why I said safety. <laughs> you know, safety. Uh, so, so a lot of people will have thought that government mm -hmm. will have first provided mm -hmm. those mitigants mm -hmm. clearly yes. mm -hmm. before going mm -hmm. into what will clearly mm -hmm. uh, lead more people mm -hmm into poverty mm -hmm. and into suffering. Mm -hmm. But here you are saying that, yes, yeah. they will need to suffer yeah. and need to learn to, how to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, we would all need to learn to adjust our lives. So I'm saying that how is government so how adjusting, adjusting their lives? How is government adjust adjusting, adjusting its own adjusting lifestyle? adjusting its lifestyle by reducing how? the number of people that are parading everywhere. How, so how government is not increasing its own cost of governance. Government is going to decrease. And while we're at it, let's remember that President Tinubu has been in office from May 29 to date. Mm. Yeah. So the process of reducing cost and governance is what he's working on now. Mm. And the issue of re removing uh, mitigants for um, fuel subsidy has been given to NEC and they'll provide that. Mm. So for us to and um, 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 calibrate and keep referencing, oh, we haven't done anything. Nothing has been done. Nothing has been done. If you've ever worked in government, you'll know that it's not something that you do in a week. It's not something that you do like yesterday to say, oh, I'm deploying $800 million to Nigerians to mitigate the subsidy. And for us to keep pretending that we're keeping the subsidy because we haven't put in mitigants is just a way to keep on subsidizing other people. This subsidy money is going to other people's pockets. Neighboring countries are benefiting from it. So under no guise can we justify yeah, that, that using the fact that... That's self-indicting on the government. Well, If the subsidy money is going to neighboring countries, that's, that's so the government nobody, is so, indicting so, itself. Yeah, yeah, so nobody has said the government is man not indicted. Man the border. Mm. Man yeah, the border. Yeah, yeah. It's not so, 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 no, 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 to man the border. No, no, it's not about that. It's beyond the borders. Is that let us accept the reality of what it costs for us. 
Why is Nigeria subsidizing? Is that what is obtainable in all oil producing companies? What? Countries? All other, yes. all other okay. oil producing countries mm -hmm. have functionary refineries. So, we're in, in trying to get refineries functional, we should yeah. continue subsidizing petrol products that are going into someone else's pocket? So I find this laughable because every other, I think, political party has removal of subsidy except um, NNPP. So why are we pretending to come up in arms about full subsidy removals that President Buhari, outgoing president, removed it in July? Um, Labour Party, remove. PDP, remove. APC, remove. And APC is implementing what all the political parties Labour have Party said. Labour Party and PDP yeah. said yeah. Yeah. that they so would have like removed, but they would but not they would, have removed but they would have in this manner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, they so it's not even forcefully because the budget <laughs> for our the, the Nigerian budget doesn't have provision for subsidy removal up until uh, up until July. So why uh, so why did we remove it? We in May? No, no, we have to so that we that but, is but reality. There's a budget provision for it till the end of June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why did we remove it? So let us use that. To me, it's like it's even I find like so 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 funny when. People are hinging this issue of subsidy removal when it's like like a gun. Because the warm month, the, the, the yeah. warm month <laughs> will have given the new government some, some time some to plan. Space. The new government is okay to, to do it. Mm -hmm. We don't need that one month. We really? feel it's fine. Yes. Even so against the provisions of the budget. Well, yeah. yes, we're okay with it. We think it's the right thing I mean, to even do the president because said we cannot. Himself, that we need to let the yeah. poor. You know, yeah. there has to be a setting, um, and those setting, coming. and those setting things are going to be done through neck. Mm. But everybody is like, "Oh no, nothing's been done. You guys haven't done anything." La, 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 I mean, la, la. Very quickly, I mean, he's before, been president from 29th of May. Before Seriously, we go, because you have the ear of the president. I yeah. think at this point, it's just really important to note that even though this recommendation has come up and it has been pushed back. Yes. Now, the fact that we're even having that conversation about the cost of governance yes. is something that we need to look at mm -hmm. because everybody is making an adjustment. The current administration also has to make an so adjustment. So even before we came into power, cost of governance is a major trust in our yeah. policy document. Yes. So we're very aware of that. Yes. So the idea of, it's not even about increasing the salary, it's about trimming down governance in totality before you even come to the issue of salary. So for oh. us, it's giving that um, mm -hmm. cost of governance will be reduced. The modality with which it will be implemented is what we need to get down to do. So, reduction in cost of governance, ensuring that there are mitigants um, against removal of um, fuel subsidy will be provided, but then these actions have to be taken. It's mm. in the larger interest of Nigeria and Nigerians. All right, Thank Adiza, you so much. special advisor <laughs> to, us to leave President for about five minutes, but this was a very, very policy good coordination. We want to thank you. <laughs> thank you so I mean, much for having me. We will have to learn how to cope with all these things. <laughs> yeah, told us we that do. So far. Cope. Yes. Learn to cope. Yes. We, we will. And again, congratulations you. on your book. Yes. And, and by Thank the way, so keep much. writing because you write very well. Thank yes. you. Thank right. you. I'll keep you, doing that. Thanks Thank a lot. You Thank you so for much. having me. Thank you very much. Bala Usman. <laughs>